the things that we spoke about in the beginning, what the resistance is here for, some of the things that were talked about in the book, The Code of the Matrix, which I wrote, and uh, exactly what my transformation has been and what I'm attempting to do for this society. What I first wanted to start talking about is I wanted to talk about ascension and what exactly ascension is. Because, um, well, it's just necessary. So ascension is knowledge. It is the ability to actually take what's going on around you and to be able to apply it to your body, to your mind, to get yourself on another level. Realistically, what's happening in the society right now is that we have a plethora of knowledge available to us but there is a heavy need to sift through that knowledge for what's important. Once we started to sift through this knowledge, we started to discover other things, that there was something going on in this planetary system. And the reason why I speak with the term we is because, it, to me, no one can do anything by themselves. This is a symbiotic relationship that we're dealing with here on the planet. And so one thing feeds another just as you would drink a glass of water in the morning or need that water, so you've consumed that water. So the balance here on this planetary system is about everyone working together in a synergistic way, and the more power you have within that system, the further people can go. And so we find ourselves in a time of history where we need the knowledge of exactly how to power the body and how to power the mind and how to power the aura, etc., the mind, body, and soul, is coming uh, to the forefront. That's something that everyone feels, well, not everyone, but a great deal of people are now are feeling like they need to get more in tune with their spirit body. And this is only because the spirit body, which operates in what the, the plane that we like to call subconscious, is always counting things. It's always paying attention to things. It has a memory that allows you to remember who your a person was in elementary school with you and you can dream about that person and see them but if I ask you consciously can you do you remember everyone that you were in elementary school with some people would say no I, I, I don't really know anyone there but still have a dream and see those people so what this was about is this is start this started with ascension I'm just going to begin with my story and I'm going to get on this uh, board here and people will be able to see this when we go on the video and um, but just understand, so said I'm, I'm actually going in another direction, so if there's any sound issues, just let me know. So, what basically happened to me is I was a person that, as a child, I had one big question, which was, what happens after you die? And to my astonishment, and also to my, uh, we put fear in me, the person that I asked, which I believe was my mother or father, well, probably my mother, um, said that no one really knows what happens after you die, that the best that you could really do to figure this out was to go to church or to get involved with religion. And they had the answers somewhat to how, what was going to happen after you died. And it just so happens that in our particular household, the, the prevailing religion was Islam, an actual uh, sect of Islam called Wahhabism. And Wahhabism is a very strict sect of Islam. It requires that one not eat salt. It requires that one uh, have their, their ankles certain areas uh, exposed from their ankles to their feet. Of course, you don't wear shoes in the house. You uh, don't celebrate holidays, especially pagan holidays. So this is the, the kind of household that I grew up in, and my mother was actually a designer. She designed clothes. And so this also allowed us to have the actual garb that was associated with what we believed in, and I had to wear this to public school every day. So right off the bat, my life started off with me being different. And what also began to happen is because I was a little bit further advanced by the standards of school, I started to become always around people that were older than me. But there was one part of this, because I actually grew up on a military base in Oceanside, California, there was one part about this that I didn't understand, and it was when I saw a stealth bomber fly overhead. 
And then I went to do some studies. I think I was only like nine, eight or nine years old. And I found first the budget for the stealth bomber and how much money they had spent in building this plane. And in the first thing that came to my mind was, if they can spend so much money building this plane, why couldn't they spend that same amount of money in figuring out what would happen when you died? Surely, that would be enough money to figure it out. Because with my child mind, I was doing such an analytical examination of what was going on in church. Even to the point that I started to memorize the tongues of certain people. And if anyone's been in church and understands what speaking in tongues is, it's supposed to be a session when you get high into the spirit that you actually speak this language that only you and the God know what you're saying. It says it's the language that the devil can't comprehend. That's the, the motif that goes with this. And so what, what happened from that point is, is that I started to analyze church and I, seen, I saw a lot of things happening, but personally I didn't have my own experience myself. Until one particular occasion, and I couldn't be no more than 12. Now, mind you, at this point, I've already been baptized at least six or seven times. Because the prerequisites for any time we will go into these churches and attempt to join them were generally you had to be baptized. So, what happened was, is that in one particular church that we had joined, which was actually right next door to our house, they took me through a session of what they call tearing for the Holy Ghost. And what this is about is this is a person is to, supposed to say hallelujah over and over and over and over and over and over again until something basically happens. And what they generally do is they put you in a room with someone else who already has the Holy Spirit, as they say. And those are the people or the elders helping you get this enlightenment, which is what it would be termed in our language now. Some would even call it illumination, if others know the difference between enlightenment and illumination. Illumination is more associated when the actual being is giving you a higher level of power. Now, if you understand that, what goes on in church, there's a few, few things that after you get to this level of power that you understand. One, the power is not coming from you. I'm moving forward a little bit here, but I'm going to explain a few things. They say the power does not come from you, it belongs to God. And you're a vessel of God, and God is working through you. That's exactly how it works. People should not be confused with that. So the power that they're actually getting, that would generally be accompanied with when your chakra is actually turned on, does not belong to them, and is only able to happen as far as healing someone because of the spirit that's inside your body doing this. So... What happened to me in this particular session is they, we were going at this for maybe about an hour. And even these guys that had been sent in there, two elders, they were getting a little tired. And so they decided they wanted to move into the main sanctuary because we were in a smaller room. When we moved into the main sanctuary, I began again saying this over and over and over again. And then at one point, I think about 30 more minutes in, I felt my tongue begin to catch up or stutter. And then at that moment, I looked in the corner of the church, and, well, actually, what stopped this from happening, the gentleman that was, the gentleman that was with us, he tapped me, the other guy, really hard, and he said, do you see that angel over there? And I looked also where he was pointing, and there was an outline of what most people would call an angel right there that stood as high as the church. And apparently it scared the guy so much he kind of interrupted me and then I kind of stopped because this is somewhat of a vibration or build up thing that goes on when you're saying these mantras. And what ended up happening is, is that what I can term is that angel stopped me from receiving what they would call the Holy Ghost. So, now fast forward. 